of those people was Representative Jim Banks, Republican from Indiana, Republican Study Committee Chairman, House Armed Services Committee as well. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Your reaction to the production that was last night? Well, last night's hearing was a prime time dud. No, nothing came out of it that we didn't, we didn't know before. and It didn't change anybody's minds. At the, at the end of the day, this committee is trying to prosecute Donald Trump for crimes that he did not commit. And last night proved that they don't, they don't have any evidence that shows anything that's different than that. They want to put Donald, they want to throw Donald Tr Trump in jail if they can't get that done. They want to prevent his name from appearing on the ballot. They want to continue to use this committee process as a way to attack their political opponents. But we also learned from reports over the weekend that this committee is actually going to come out and recommend for abolishing the Electoral College and to advance the radical election agenda of the Democrats to nationalize, federalize elections, to move all states toward mail-in ballots. That, that that's what this committee is really all about. It's not about investigating January 6th. You know, Congressman, I've heard a lot of Republicans say they're not telling us the whole story. There was a lot that happened that they don't want to be released to the public, including the media, like Cash Patel said under oath, Christopher Miller and Mark Meadows and Donald Trump said under oath that two days before this, that they were doing everything in their power, that the president did ask for two, 20,000 National Guard troops to be there to to be there around the Capitol for safety reasons, and that Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of D.C. and the sergeant of arms did not allow that to happen. They denied the National Guard and a written refusal. Is Tell us more about that. What are they not telling us that if we talk to Republicans, they would say? Well, that, that's why we say this is a cover-up. This committee is a cover-up. It's, it's not just a, a cover-up from distracting from the issues that the American people are demanding that we focus on, like $5.25 a gallon of gas in my hometown in Columbia City, Indiana. But it's a cover-up of Nancy Pelosi's roles and responsibilities as Speaker of the House and oversight of the Capitol Police and Capitol Security. She has documents in her office about why the National Guard was called off because of, quote, bad optics that she refused to give up to the bipartisan Senate Homeland Security Committee that investigated January 6th several months ago. So the, the cover-up here is, is that. Why, they, why don't they want to talk about the real issues about the complete disintegration and uh, the breakdown of, of leadership and security on January 6th and the weeks leading up to it on Capitol Hill? Those are the serious questions that if I were in the room as the ranking member of this committee, that we would have been asking about last night, but we were, we were denied the opportunity to do that. Congressman, it was like watching the impeachment, impeachment hearings without the other side. It was simply it. Okay, they have their point of view, I get it. I understand you don't like President Trump, you never did. So what if you were able to pick sound bites you want, stop them when you want, have the right end point and end point, because they're back to what you say, and you put together your side, and that's okay. The problem is, there was no other side. So you sat there saying, okay, are we going to commercial now? <laughs> so no one says it was a good move to storm the Capitol. The video is horrendous. Anytime law enforcement's beaten, I'm against it uh, to the nth degree. But the other thing they forgot to do, if Donald Trump planned this, it didn't come up at the family dinner to Eric and Don Jr. Because they had no idea this would happen. In fact, the text messages that were released to the public show that Don Jr. was calling back, he goes, we gotta stop this, what's happening here? This was not the intent. That would have been the pushback to show you that nobody wanted the breach of the Capitol. But they're not gonna have this opportunity. And I think it actually hurts their cause. It really does. Never forget that Donald Trump in his speech said, go down to the Capitol and patriotically and peacefully make your voice heard. I, I can't get over those words. Didn't inc wasn't that included. They was they not included. The, they won't present that uh, part of his speech to the American people. Congressman, you've, you've conducted, you've been a part of your own investigation uh, after being banned from being a part of this panel. Talk to us about what you would focus on or what you've discovered. Well, we, we've discovered serious and real issues related to the breakdown of leadership within, the, within the, the top ranks of the Capitol Police. Remember that right after January 6th, the Capitol Police rank and file members got together and over 90% of them voted no confidence in their department's leadership. I mean, I, the head of the Capitol Police Union told me that they weren't prepared for what happened on January 6th because the intelligence never got to them. It, uh, they had intelligence weeks before then that never got to rank and file Capitol Police officers. They weren't equipped. They had outdated and faulty equipment. The rioters had better equipment than they did. And they weren't trained for a riot, even after all the riots uh, in Washington, D.C., the BLM riots in the summer of 2020. So those, those are the real issues that our report is going to tackle, how to fix those issues and how to inform the next speaker, Kevin McCarthy, and how to do a much better job to secure the Capitol and take those issues more seriously 
exactly than Nancy Pelosi ever did. Congressman Banks, uh, the inflation report, let's talk about inflation because the consumer price index is coming out uh, in a little while. The inflation report expected to run very hot because now we're seeing an increase not only in energy costs and food costs that we talk about a lot. Now rent costs are going up and gas prices went up again today. Yesterday, 497. Today, the average price, some states are higher, 498. What's your reaction? Well, going back to last night, these Democrats are so obsessed with Donald Trump that they are completely incapable of addressing the real issues that the American people care about, like gas prices and inflation. This inflation report today is going to prove once again that it's the Democrats' policies all across the board that, that means that it's, it's costing you more money to go to the grocery store to fill up your gas tank and, and just to, to pay your bills and, and live your life. So from, from erasing uh, student loans to their, their so-called Build Back Better plan, the radical climate change agenda, all of this has contributed uh, to this massive growth in inflation and gas prices. We're not going to let them off the hook for it, but it's only going to continue to get to get worse as long as these Democrats are in control. All right, here's what uh, with Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm told us to be ready for this summer. This summer is going to be rough. I'll just be honest with you. Um, the Energy Information Agency, which is the energy that the entity that projects forward all the price of gas, the price of oil, has said that by the fall, it should be down to $4.27 a gallon. And by late this year, early next year, it'll be down to four, maybe under four, maybe three, high $3 a gallon. So there will be some relief on the horizon. But during the summer driving season, it is going to be rough, no doubt about it, because we have such a demand and supply mismatch on the global market for oil. But Congressman, if you want to do something about gas and oil, you go up to the gas and oil companies and you talk about a five-year plan. They're asking together for a five-year plan and they will be able to get the investors to order to start puncturing holes and expanding if they know exactly the commitment from the government. The president won't do that. No, I, gas prices have doubled since Joe Biden has been in office. He hasn't been in office for two years yet. This just goes to show, you hear these Democrats talk, they do not care that it's costing you twice as much to fill up your gas tank and costing you more to put food on the table. They do not care because it's their policies that are causing it. And, and all they have to do is roll back their, their radical agenda all across the board, and that would, that would send us back to where we were just two years ago when we had a Republican in the White House and Donald Trump, where, where it was easier to make ends meet. They, they do not care because it's their policies that are causing it. Certainly are, no doubt about it. Well, Congressman, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. We appreciate thank the you. insight. Thank, thank you. you.